Hi, welcome to Kevin Stoda's YouTube channel. I want to read to you today. I want to share with you about what you should be thinking about this um, time uh, from COVID-19 uh, pandemic era. We need to be recording and thinking about these things, what we're going to share with our children. Uh, think about mistakes we made or things that we've done right. And use the time to be mindful. I'm, I came across an article by Sanjay Gupta. And uh, you've all seen him on the uh, news and TV interviews and stuff. But I would I like to read to him. that suddenly, suddenly, the world is all in this together. Okay? Too much of um, who's right, who's wrong has gone on. And we're in this together right now. We need to remember we made a lot of mistakes. Our government made a lot of mistakes. And uh, a lot of people planning the economy have made a lot of mistakes. Um, uh, you know, Sanjay Gupta is the CNN medical expert who's been in the many, many interviews recently. Um, and he writes, what are the biggest lessons we've learned from the pandemic? One, we need to build surge capacity. When it comes to defense, we constantly operate under surge capacity, being ready and able to wage battle at a moment's notice. We don't think of pandemics the same way, and yet they pose a bigger threat than just about anything else. We need to have a capacity to handle significant surges in patients, hospitals, beds, ICUs, ventilators, personal protective equipment. And yet in this country and a lot of other countries in the world, we have decreased our capacity all in the name of efficiency and so-called efficiency, we should say, and in the name of um, um, just-in-time planning or, um, yeah, planning, logistics. Uh, hospital bins are expensive, they say. If you keep them empty, that is a significant cost, they say. What we've seen here is that significant costs can be worth it. And we're going to face this uh, again. And we also see how disruptive it is to society. We're paying a lot of other costs, not just the cost in lives and, and medicine. Any other lessons? We need a pandemic surveillance team. We used to have one after and before and during uh, Ebola. It was dismantled a couple of years ago. I think it's human nature, even in your own personal health, that if you don't see a threat, you tend not to deal with it. But that doesn't mean it's not there. Enough with the ostrich in the sand approach to government, uh, believing that the government can't help you out. This doesn't mean that all government spending is good and we need to have oversight. And that's what we're not having right now either. Um, next, he asks, how has COVID-19 changed medicine? Telehealth has been around for a long while. This virus has turbo boosted telehealth, and I think we'll be using telehealth in a way we have never used it before. It will affect the medical system overall. And I guess they'll still need to hire some more doctors to be on telehealth because we also have the situation of, of needing live doctors too. Um, what has been most surprising uh, thing about covering this virus for CNN? Uh, he's a medical correspondent for them. He's a doctor too. So far in my life, this is the biggest health concern we have faced. Dr. Fauci reminded me that one of the first stories I did as a journalist was with him. We were talking about HIV AIDS at this point 20 years ago. At the end of our interview, I asked him, what do you really worry about? He said with gravely assured voice, what I worry about is a respiratory virus that is lethal and more contagious than the flu. And in 2017, he said it again, there will be a surprise pandemic within the next several years. How is the coronavirus different from other health crises you've covered? You get these uh, circulating pathogens like Ebola or SARS or MERS, but they're usually either highly lethal or, or contagious, not both. Highly lethal or contagious. We've got one that is both. It's very unusual. I haven't seen it in my lifetime, one that is both highly contagious and lethal. Some people say the curse is proving worse than the disease. What do you make of that? Well, I don't think so. What they mean is that the stay-at-home order will have a certain impact on our econo economy. 
and our way of life, and that's really hard on people. It is. Uh, I'm empathetic to that way of thinking, but the cure is not worse than the disease. The cure keeps the disease from becoming worse. I'll say that again. The, uh, the cure is not worse than the disease. The cure keeps the disease from becoming worse. For most people, even if they get the virus, they may get very sick for a period of time. It's tough for them, but they're going to recover. We can rebound from both the public health and the economic impact of this, but by failing to act right now, we also threaten to worsen both of these things. It's hard for people to see. It's an unseen enemy here, the virus. This is harder for people to get their arms around. How is this virus affecting rural and urban America differently? There's no question that in urban areas, because of the densely, densely populated nature, those were going to be the places where you saw the virus emerge first and emerge quickly. But in even sparsely populated rural areas, you're starting to see the same curves that you see in those hotspots. Hopefully in some of these rural areas, they all are able to prepare for uh, change and better things. Um, lost my page for a second, sorry. Uh, I will kind of finish there. I want you to uh, think about this. Uh, Ford County in Kansas, uh, to the west of us here in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, by quite a distance. Uh, it's closer to Denver, probably, than here. Uh, they have the largest outbreak in Kansas of uh, COVID-19 with highest death toll. Um, what are we gonna see in other parts of the country? Like what are we gonna see in Branson when they open up more or more and more people come in from different parts there in the next few months? Uh, what are we gonna see in, in the counties around there? Um, we have very low numbers down in, in uh, Southwest uh, Missouri, for example, in, in the Joplin area. But um, it's going to happen because people, as things open up, are going to travel more. Uh, and some people are carriers, uh, asymptomatic ones, and other people are not. People who go visit their family uh, throughout this region. So it's a serious matter, as Dr. Gupta says. We've got to uh, see that the cure prevents it from getting worse. It's not worse to have a cure of staying apart. Uh, in my family, my daughter has not been out of the yard uh, since this started. So it's been eight weeks now uh, in Kansas City. Uh, she's not been out of the yard and uh, she's doing really well. But other people are out taking their kids to dinners and, and stuff like that. you got to be careful. Really make sure you're not running into too many other people. <laughs> Go into a store and turn back. Um, keep only one, maybe one key adult going to the store and not mix it up. Because otherwise you won't be able to trace the virus later. Um, who brought it into the family. It will happen. And so far, my family's been lucky, especially in Southwest Missouri, uh, where I expect the next uh, virus outbreak to begin, just because people are so relaxed about it. Uh, the same things happen in Kansas City. Uh, it it depends on the store. For example, I was at an Aldi's in Raytown, and almost everybody was covered. I was surprised this, the guard wasn't, but uh, almost everybody was covered. Uh, whereas you go to Walmart, uh, maybe uh, certain times a day, many people are covered. But you go to another Walmart, uh, and there'll be, I saw just a few weeks ago, only eight out of maybe every hundred person wearing a mask there. Uh, and that was a different time of day in a different location. So it depends on your location. You need to be prepared to just walk out of the store. Um, I want you to protect your families and uh, I want you to remember that the cure is not worse than uh, what's gonna happen if, it, if we let it get worse. Um, we, the country's mismanaged this from the beginning 
uh, Tiny Korea, which had the, a virus uh, case uh, the same day we did in January, has had only 300 deaths. What we find acceptable in the number of deaths in the United States, yes, we are uh, 10 times bigger, but we have had more than 10 times. We've had more than uh, well, at least uh, 300 deaths times um, about 10,000 times. We've had a, about a thousand times more deaths and that's not right. All right, you take care and you do your math and think about how many people you're contacting. And uh, if you do go out, um, you know, try your best to, to be safe until we get this vaccine or, or a miracle. All right, thank you. Have a good summer.